this presentation is about, I would say, some vehicles marketplace in United States. Uh, I'm not allowed to tell you which ones. And let me uh, describe you the definition of the problem. So uh, in this model, we considered territory of United States divided by regions. And each region was divided uh, by <coughs> districts. And all these territories were considered totally independent. So uh, customers and potential customers were living in a particular district and they did not move from one to another. They did not interact with uh, another people from another districts or regions. And each district contained customers, dealers, and vehicles to be sold. And these vehicles were of two main types, new and used. So we considered a uh, combined market of new and used vehicles. Each vehicle uh, has its own characteristics, brand, classification, uh, model year, uh, condition, new or used, and of course, price. And in initial data, we had uh, geographical distribution and uh, pricing data for new and used vehicles. And pricing uh, for used vehicles uh, can be different for different districts price for new vehicles is uh, countrywide. Dealers. First of all, we considered only uh, single branded dealers and they were selling only new vehicles. So they do not care about used ones. They operate within the, uh, within the region and well, actually within the district, it's misprint. And another uh, assumption we had is that all requested vehicles are available for purchase. Since we, uh, we targeted, we focused on demand on the market, uh, we wanted to identify how many uh, units how many vehicles we will be able to sell and we did not want uh, availability to be a uh, constraint in our model when we talk about customers uh, we see that uh, they have a lot of characteristics like age gender race uh, we segmented them based on, on these things, employment, uh, income, and current status in terms of the model. And this status, as well as uh, other characteristics, uh, directly influences the probability of purchase of the vehicle. And again, uh, in initial data, we had uh, distribution by region of each uh, well, each type of uh, agent with uh, some characteristics. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, in this model, we considered only potential uh, and existing customers as agents. So we did not uh, simulate all the uh, population of uh, United States. And the uh, population of agents in our, uh, in our model was dynamic with births and uh, deaths. And uh, interesting thing is that 
the specific of this uh, of this product of vehicles is that as soon as someone buys a vehicle, probability of death increases, like with tobacco or alcohol. Uh, of course, uh, agents are not static, so we have uh, their age is increasing, uh, employment can change, and uh, of course, uh, their income. The capacity of the market is really huge and we used scaling technique to, uh, to be able to uh, simulate the market. So one agent in our model represents a uh, hundred of people uh, with the same characteristics. So as soon as one agent uh, takes a decision to buy a vehicle, it means that a uh, hundred of people make such decision. And then uh, the results were extrapolated with, with the same scale. Marketing uh, models, I, I would say uh, there are uh, the, the hardest ones for modelers because uh, you have to recreate behavior of people and uh, it's obvious that you cannot uh, fully recreate it and you have to make some assumptions on how they behave. And in this model, we used concept of touches with subject. Uh, they could be dealer visits, advertisement or contacts with owners or uh, interested, uh, or people interested uh, in the same subject. Each agent can be in several states, which I uh, mentioned previously, and they switch between them uh, depending on number of accumulated touches with the subject. And in each state, they have a uh, different probability of uh, buying a product. And uh, in, in this state, it, it's one probability. Here, uh, they have higher probability of buying. And finally, they uh, end up in buying. But since we consider uh, both uh, new and used vehicles, owners still can make a decision to buy a new vehicle and to sell uh, the one they own right now. And important thing is that touch uh, may be discarded. And uh, you have, you can see uh, arrows or connectors going in backward direction. Uh, if our agent did not make a decision to buy a vehicle uh, during some period of time, which also depends on the characteristics of agent. Then uh, touches with the subject are discarded and uh, he starts in, in, in these states. Uh, on this uh, in this state chart, you can see two branches that look almost the same. And the reason is that we had very detailed data for main marketing segment, but uh, we also focused, focused on additional segment. Uh, and mainly these are people uh, of uh, elder age or uh, lower income uh, in comparison to main market segment. So they were uh, logically divided and uh, depending on the uh, income or age, agent can switch back and forth.
So uh, the main challenges, unlike the unlike most other uh, areas of application, marketing models really depend on the data. For example, for uh, production models, you can measure timings of uh, of operations if you do not know that. In, in case of marketing models, you really need to have data, uh, some marketing analysis, and quality of this analysis and completeness really makes sense. Another, uh, another challenge is to translate the, the data you have to behavior of, the, uh, of your agents. Again, for uh, logistics or, I, I don't know, uh, productions, uh, production problems, you can easily understand, maybe not so easily, but still you can understand behavior of the system just from looking at it and analyzing. In in marketing models, you have to somehow understand behavior from the data you have, and that's why quality of data is really important. And finally, uh, again, you have to have statistical data to validate your model. It's really important because Mostly, such models are, are used to uh, to prognose uh, demand or sales or whatever. Okay, so let me show you the model. It's not too dynamic, but still uh, you can see that something is happening there. And uh, it runs not so fast because we simulate uh, 200,000 agents in it. And we gather different kinds of statistics uh, at the end of uh, simulation and during the simulation. So as I said before, the main goal was demand and uh, market share forecast for forecast for five years and revenue forecast and uh, statistics is divided by by brands by uh, segments by types of vehicles uh, and so on so it's very detailed that's it Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> All questions are welcome. Alina. Um, hi there. Um, quick question. You mentioned uh, validation, uh, and you mentioned the importance of validation. Uh, could you share like, how, how did you validate this, this model? Right, so uh, the, uh, each decision uh, in the model has uh, its own, well, let's name it coefficient, but it's not that easy. But still we have some parameters for each decision made by an agent. Uh, and of course we cannot exactly understand 
behavior of, uh, of an agent from, uh, from the data we have. So uh, we have to parameterize some decisions and then we can use uh, historical data of the market for, for previous years to uh, identify weights of these parameters so that our model uh, provides the same results as uh, the real world some that time ago. By that, the same results, you mean uh, qualitatively or quantitatively as well? Uh, both of that. Oh, okay. Mainly quantitatively. Hi. Uh, was there actual decisions that the business has taken uh, after seeing the simulation? Because, I mean, the simulations, typically they would um, uh, predict the behavior in terms of a huge number of, or large number of years. But was there actual results that could be applied immediately, like for yeah, operations or strategy? Well, uh, that is a strategic model. So uh, results uh, were not implemented immediately. But uh, by the way, in this model, we uh, also uh, use uh, unemployment forecast for United States and the market share and uh, the capacity of, of the market really depends on that. And the, the main uh, question for the next year was how many vehicles we should produce, mm -hmm. right? So that uh, the results of this uh, marketing model uh, have pretty strong connection with the production plans for uh, for next years. Okay, clear, thank you. More questions? <coughs> How about the time? I can I determine the time or uh, depend on the data of history? Hmm. So I can put any time for modeling or simulation? Uh, or should in, be in, in general, yes, you can. So mm -hmm. you, you can use the same model mm -hmm. to, uh, to make forecast for 10 years, for example, but uh, you, you need to, to have some additional data. For example, we had uh, uh, unemployment rate forecast only for five years. And uh, an another uh, thing you should uh, keep in mind is uh, the the further you go, the less uh, accurate results you have, right? But if you use the same model from time to time, this year, then next year, then uh, you can be more or less uh, more or less sure that results at least for, for the next year are more or less accurate. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Okay.